Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our session sponsored by Google Cloud. I'd like to introduce our next speakers, Ilash Mystery, Lead Sales Engineer at Fivetran, and Guillaume de Monlevit, Looker BI Customer Engineer at Google Cloud. They will be walking through what sales analytics is, the challenges within sales analytics, and the type of reporting within sales analytics. With that, Ilash, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Alexa. Okay, so um, yeah, my name's Elash Mystery. I'm a lead sales engineer at Fivetran. I've essentially got a background in working with ETL tools and also working with BI tools as well. So I'll be introducing from the Fivetran side. So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Guillaume. Can you? Yeah. Uh, so my name is Guillaume, and I'll be. I also have a background in more, mostly in BI uh, and also a bit of our ETL, and I'll be presenting more the how you can surface the data using a, a, a BI tool. Perfect. Thanks, Kim. Okay, so what is sales analytics? So every every organization goes through this kind of evolution where they're essentially getting data. They need to kind of get data from their um, marketing, pull it into a place where they can actually take the, that marketing data and transfer it into something which is essentially a qualified lead and then push it through at each stage, um, grabbing the data from all their tools and their, all their organization to actually optimize their funnel. So at the moment, you know, like this, this may start off with a process of CSV files or Excel spreadsheets more, more commonly, but essentially the key is data. And it's, and it's a case of making sure that data can be efficiently pulled, efficiently refreshed, and also making sure that you can gain insights from that data so you can unlock potential problems which are stopping growth of your business. And, and also when you get to that point in an evolution where you've got that data in there, you know, forecasting and modeling is super important as well. So you can really kind of start utilizing the data properly to create these what if models. And that's the challenge with sales analytics, you know, like essentially somebody wants a report at, at the end of play each day to understand how they're gonna work um, best with their team the next day. And, and essentially bits of data which are missing are gonna cause problems and make sure it's, it's tough to interpret. Essentially, even in, in organizations I've worked in, you know, making sure that a, a kind of a, a, a sales lead is actually a good qualified lead, you know, has different interpretations coming from different people in the business, collating all that information together to actually create one single source of truth is super important. And, and this is where you have the traditional approach to centralizing data. You essentially, um, and I've been an integration developer for a number of years, the integration developers in your business always have that issue where you are given a set of requirements, whether they're from uh, business analysts or or managers in the business that they want to get this report. So they say that this is what I want to see. And the integration developer has to go back and build that data from a number of sources. And that can be, and as you can imagine, that's my interpretation as an in, um, in integration developer, where I get the data from. That could be ship, um, kind of shared spreadsheets, that could be databases, that could be, you know, like CRM tools. And in order to get that data out, you need a variety of tools. As you can see, you know, like Informatica, Talent are big players in this ETL space. And actually to build that report, to build that data set, to service that report could take a number of weeks to essentially get that data. And if there's, an, if there's something incorrect about that report, then the whole cycle has to start again. And this is the integrator's challenge. If somebody asks for the report um, and they kind of have to go through this series of steps, these series of Chinese whispers to essentially get the data to feed that report. And at each point, you have an iterative cycle to make mistakes. 
So the more people that they're in this loop, the more people, the more expertise, the more tools, that means that the user's going to not have that particularly smiling face for quite a while because they're actually not going to get the data that they need. And also what's even worse is that can they rely on that data that they're getting? Are they getting are they getting a particular report because a particular integration um, analyst was working on that report data set? And that's even worse, having no data or having bad data. And this is where the difference between traditional ETL and modern, modern ELT comes into play. Traditional ETL was based on a couple of premises, um, a legacy premises where storage was super expensive. And therefore, if you kind of looked at it from the bottom up, the data warehouse, so to collect um, data in a data warehouse previously was super expensive. So therefore, what I did was I picked tools that would only supply data that I needed for particular reports. And then I'd build an integration to get the data from the particular sources to build those reports. So this whole, whole kind of uh, ETL structure was flawed because you it was based on a dependency of storage being super expensive. And therefore, you always kind of were answering these questions with your hands tied behind your back. You didn't really under, you really couldn't get a complete picture because you were worried about the costs of the data warehouse. And that's where these, these modern data warehouses come into play. Now they're around and you've got a wonderful BI tools like Looker to actually interpret that data once it's in the warehouse. Then now you can actually say, okay, now I'm going to focus on what my customer needs, what the analyst needs, what the business user needs. And let's take all the data out of the sources, collect it in your warehouse, have it refreshed at regular intervals such that all the data is there. That simple, you know, looking at the problem from the different angle means that you have all the data there in your warehouse so you can interrogate it simply using a query language. And that's where that modern ELT comes into play. So five transfer sales analytics. So this is a kind of a common use case for, um, you know, that we help customers with. Five trans, a, um, an ELT tool that connects to over 180 applications or databases or files or cloud file storage or applications. Actually, we actually have support events as well. So things like Kafka and Segment. You can take data in very straightforward ways using Fivetran and land them in your data warehouse. And, and the beauty of Fivetran is that it's not only a, a essentially taking data, um, doing something called a historical sync, which essentially takes data and lands it in your warehouse, but it's being refreshed as well. And as we're a pure SaaS offering, we can offer this whole extraction process and load process with un, uh, kind of underpinned by a data delivery SLA. So Fivetran customers are now have a, a pure single source of truth, which they can interrogate with Looker once it's landed in their warehouse and they can have it refreshed at intervals right down to um, five minutes. You can actually get quicker with certain warehouses, but essentially you've got that data set being refreshed as and when you want it. And therefore you never have to go through that iterative cycle again. Oh, I've missed a bit of data. Oh, I forgot this bit of data. Oh, this report doesn't contain this particular um, dimension. I'll need to revisit my integration because the data is there in the first place. The data is there in the warehouse already such that it, it, it just needs a tweak to the query language to actually extract that value from that data. An example of a, a business that we kind of um, um, both work on in terms of fire trying to look at is that, you know, um, a, a fast moving business in kind of um, in the betting sector, in the gambling sector in the UK is football index. And as you can imagine, this is a, is a very, um, weird business model because essentially you have don't have customers which um, 
hang around for too long. You could have customers which are basically customers for one day and then they move to a different platform. So this concept of churn in these new businesses is super important and super valuable to track. So you can imagine that the normal sales cycles really go out the window for businesses like Football Index. And having an understanding of how users are using the platform, how users are interacting with the platform and how the business itself is marketing to them is, is super important to gather those patterns to improve the platform. And also with, with um, businesses like Football Index, they also need to track um, how to identify people that have got particular issues in using their platform because of government um, regulations as well. So it's a twofold process. You're not only tracking how people are using it and encouraging them to use more, but you're also making sure that you're socially responsible and, and highlighting certain gates that they've got to go through or they can't bypass if they're um, you know, hitting certain um, usage levels, essentially. Okay, and in terms of our connectors, so Fivetran has a has loads of application connectors that you can hook into slight uh, really quickly, but essentially, you know, th these are just kind of an example of all the CRMs. We've got uh, marketing connectors, you know, Google Google uh, Marketplace, and also um, Facebook Ads, etc. So we got loads of different marketing connectors, loads of different e-commerce POS connectors. And essentially, we're going to be able to be that tool that gathers that data from those applications and essentially creates a single source of truth for your BI tools like Looker. Thanks, Ilesh, for, uh, for introducing Five Trans. So let's move now more on the uh, on the BI side of the of the process. So basically. Uh, this, uh, let me go back to my screen here. Uh, so basically, once uh, once all your data is uh, is centralized in a, in in a, in the data warehouse using Fivetran, you you know the next stage of the process is to be able to, to be able to surface it to your end user. And usually, typically, what you face is uh, users will face two challenges uh, uh, if they don't use the correct BI platform. The first one is uh, that they are facing uh, what we call a data bottleneck, meaning that each time you need a report, if you don't have self-service, you need to go to a data person who is going to build a report for you, but it can take a lot of time because it's all held up by this technical person. And usually, what happens uh, is that you know, like they weigh too much, and way they weigh, when they weigh, they weigh too much, what they do is they end up trying to find the data by themselves, which lead to another uh, typical problem, uh, which we call data chaos. So data chaos is basically like uh, no one has the same definition of the metric, and in cells. You can imagine what happens when uh, you know two different sales uh, uh, manager come up, go to the CEO, the CEO with different sales figures. You know they are they, they lose trust and they then spend a lot of time trying to find where the error is coming from. So to avoid this, you need to to get a, a BI platform which enables those three things, which is first cell service. So to avoid having to go to a technical person, you want to enable true cell service where anyone without any technical uh, qualification can actually build their own reports without having to go to the data team. Then the second thing that you need is real-time data. You don't want to work on stale data, which uh, comes from a re refresh of the previous day or the previous week. Uh, uh, the benefit is that you always make decisions straight away and you can be notified when there is any change in your sales pipeline. Also, you know, as I was saying, you want to have true governance by using metrics which are centrally defined uh, in your in, in your inner model, so that you make sure that everyone is always using the same metric across the company, uh, basically having secret source of truth uh, and ensuring that you know uh, the C levels actually trust the data that their sales manager provide. And basically, what architecture should you have to uh, to 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 get uh, such a similar architecture. So 
as Elish uh, presented. Uh, so first, you take all your data sources uh, uh, using an ETL like Fivetran into a central data warehouse. Ideally, you would use a data warehouse, uh, which is the, the dedicated for analytics, like Snowflake, Redshift, or BigQuery. Uh, and then uh, you can use a BI tool, uh, which uh, enable to centrally define those metrics in a, in a model. Uh, and make them an enable true self-service, and which allows you to do four different things. So first, have modern BI, so you dashboarding, creating report very easily. Also, where you can embed dashboard for your customers, because remember, uh, your customers might want to know also uh, a, a lot of customers are interested about your data as well. You can also automate certain processes. So a typical uh, process I see, which uh, can be automated in the sales analytics area is, for example, based on the usage of your platform, uh, you might want to automatically create uh, an opportunity when you notice that your what your customer is using the platform a lot. So maybe you need to upsell them and move them to the another tier of your pricing. So what you can do in a, with a modern BI platform is automatically create opportunities based on the usage data. So cross joining data, usage data, and your sales data, and creating uh, those kind of automation. So saving your sales teams a lot of time and making sure that you react to the change uh, that your customers are facing. And what you can do as well is you need a data platform on top of which you can build custom applications uh, so that you, know, you make life even easier for your end user, your marketing team, your sales team uh, to, uh, to, to access the data easily. And you know, this uh, data platform uh, will need to have an in-database architecture. So you don't want to extract the data from this fast database that I've mentioned, like Redshift, Snowflake, uh, or BigQuery. You really want the processing of your BI2 to happen in the database. The second thing you will want is also to have a semantic modeling layer, which enables you to uh, define metrics in a central in a central location, making sure that everyone is always look, looking at the same definition and ensuring single source of truth. The second benefit also it's it provides also um, scalability. So basically, you don't need to have a herd of analysts to maintain this data model. And also, of course, we are in 2021. You want a solution which can be accessed through a web browser, which your IT team won't be afraid of uh, maintaining or installing, won't have to install on, on laptops, uh, which, uh, which can also be extensed uh, using an API. And then once uh, you implement such a BI solution, uh, you might think, oh, yeah, but you know, in this model, I need to uh, develop and define those metrics. It's, this could take a lot of time where, don't worry, uh, a modern BI uh, platform has you covered. What, what you can benefit is have uh, a directory of predefined metrics. For example, if you are, use Salesforce, you can have out of the box metrics defined what we call uh, in a, in a pre-built model, which you just have to install on your BI platform. And it will allow you to use best in class metrics that the rest of the industry is using to track uh, their business. And for example, you know, which stage of the pipeline you should include, uh, which, what, how do you define a close one opportunity and so on. So that, you know, everybody's using Salesforce in a similar way. And so all the metrics will be predefined. It also comes with out of the box dashboards. Uh, which uh, you can use instead of having to build them, and again using best in class and uh, in, in in the in the sorry in the industry, which will help you uh, uh, you know have more velocity to access your sales data. And those uh, model contents, uh, you know, are available for different type of uh, data sources. So you have for payments, uh, POS, uh, finance solutions, also a CRM, so Salesforce. I've recently built one for PyDrive, for example. Uh, so it and doesn't matter if your business is subscription-based or not subscription-based, you know, the, you have blocks to cover everything. And then, as I was saying, an example is the Salesforce uh, pre-built model, which comes with uh, so predefined metrics like the one I mentioned, so pipeline, uh, you know, which stage of the pipeline are included, uh, what what is a closed one opportunity. So you don't need, you don't need to write any codes. Uh, usually, you know, you're able to uh, uh, basically when you start a trial using Fivetran and Looker in a matter of hours, you can be started on, you know, have a dashboard like this one starting from scratch. Basically, you imagine you just have your Salesforce instance and you would be able to access this type of dashboard in a matter of hours, just to show you how quick uh, this, those are uh, to implement. 
So we have the pipeline overview, manager overview, and sales rep performance. So you can track uh, your, all your sales performance uh, very quickly. One example of a customer who implemented such uh, a, a data stack is MyParcel. So basically, what they did is uh, they were struggling, uh, and you know, a lot of their engineering team was spent, uh, uh, you know, by, uh, you know, ETLing the data in, in the database and creating a lot of ad hoc dashboards. What, when they implemented Fivetran plus Looker, they uh, they decreased drastically uh, the time spent, uh, the velocity time to go from you know, a raw data to a dashboard. And, but mainly they were also able to uh, only to serve 100 users using only two analysts. So just to give you an idea of how scalable this, uh, this process is. And the main connectors that we're using was uh, Salesforce, Postgres, uh, and all those uh, from Fivetran. And we're able to model them very quickly uh, using those uh, pre-built content that I've showed, demonstrated earlier. And so yeah, they were able to leverage all this. And uh, now their team are spending more time on their application, on their development, their developing their own application instead of develop, supporting basically the sales process because now Fivetran and Looker are able to leverage this. So Treatwell is another example with who had a similar challenge and using Fivetran uh, and Looker, they were able uh, you know, to, in, at, they had to manually maintain all those pipelines, which was taking a lot of time because, you know, the API of all those data sources that you see on the bottom right corner, they change, which means that the team had to constantly, uh, you know, work on updating those data pipelines and using Fivetran, all this was, uh, you know, um, moved to, uh, to Fivetran handling all this work so they could focus on uh, their core application. And then using Looker, they also accelerated drastically how many users they were able to serve uh, in terms of dashboards. And also, you know, uh, by having a very small uh, team of analysts, they were able they are able to serve uh, their 500 uh, users. So that's it for the presentation. Thank you very much for listening to us. If you have any question. Yeah, thank you so much, Ilash and Guillaume, on an overview of sales analytics. Um, one question is, what are the most commonly joined connectors for sales analytics? So would you, are there like, you know, three connectors that you see are common in joining? For me, the one I see the most is really like Salesforce or any CRM tool and the usage data of the platform. So it's more for software vendors. And what I see is exactly the use case I presented, which is you want to really see how much your solution is used and link it with uh, an opportunity, how much uh, how much this customer is bringing in. So using your CRM data. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, by combining those, you can automate certain processes so you can, you know, uh, upsell them quickly. You don't have to have a sales rep who can, uh, uh, who needs to track the usage manually. You know, all this can be automated using the proper BI platform. Yeah. And, and the other, other connectors that we're seeing are ERPs and also marketing data as well. So like NetSuites of the world, Google Ads, Google kind of um, Google marketing connectors as well. So. So, so many kind of um, um, ERPs and applications to bring that data in. Yeah, wow. and good point, Ilish. It also helps to calculate the, uh, the, for example, the ROI of your marketing campaign. Something I built recently is using those Google ads and Facebook ads and linking the data with how much revenue you get from Salesforce. You're able to get your ROI and marketing team uh, really like this because it helps them, you know, uh, spend more on the proper channel, which brings actual paying customers. Yeah. So joining those data sources as well are key. Yeah. Um, Ilesh, I will direct this question at you first. Um, why is it important to combine your Salesforce data with your production database? It, essentially, um, there's twofold you're creating you're pulling that data into one place such that you can actually find anomalies in that data because as people put data into different places one of the important things is to create a single source of truth but also to pick up inflections in the data and pull them out so that you can go back and correct them as well so the data is being reported on from different avenues in the same way. So different people in the organization, sales, marketing, 
you know, development are seeing the same reports, but also you've got an opportunity to correct inflections in the data. Great. And on, yeah. on, the, on the BI side, uh, it, it basically, yeah, I think I already kind of answered the question earlier. So, uh, but yeah, it allows you to, uh, to uh, by joining, you can see a user who are, you know, basically how much uh, you can link, how much they pay for your solution, but also mm -hmm. um, the usage, uh, which can, where you can juggle and automate certain processes between the two. Great. And then, Guillaume, I think this is more targeted at you. What is the most popular type of reporting you see customers doing while utilizing the Salesforce Looker Block? Uh, very good question. So usually the one uh, uh, the one which is used the most are the high level sales metrics. Then, uh, so, you know, like basically pipeline generated is on one side and more the actually how much is closed one on the other side. Then it really depends on the industry. So is it SaaS? Then you want to match subscription, churn and so on. And actually, you know, churn and is something that heavily requires usage data so production data as it was mentioned earlier because you know you want to see if a, one of your customers is not using your solution you can predict churn and that's something you know you you know combining the data is very easy to do mm -hmm. uh, and then if it's more traditional you know one shot sales um, uh, the the dashboard that uh, the, the report that you would track is yeah the typical sales pipeline uh, and so on and also you would have also access to the um, uh, to more sales performance uh, metric, like how each sales representative of the team are performing compared to the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. That also allows you to kind of gauge yourself against the rest of the company. Cool. Great. Um, and that concludes our questions. So thank you so much, Ilesh and Guillaume, for this presentation. I think it was super insightful, especially when you highlighted other type of analytics or joining you know, ERP data with your sales data, um, as well as your production database. I think you know some may not think of doing that to have like a full scope mm -hmm. of their data stack. So thank you so much. Um, our next session kicks off at 2.30. So we'll have a quick break. Now is the time to sip on some tea or take and take a break or visit our sponsor booths in the expo. If you plan on joining the expo, please select the expo icon on the left. We, I will see you after this break on Stage Cloud, where Luco, an insurance company, uses data for the data for the greater good by keeping giving back at its core business model. Thanks and enjoy the break. <laughs>